and we're back for the last cup, the Space Cup. Now, I'll probably jump into this at some other point because I actually kind of weirdly like this game way too much. Uh, I kind of want to play Pin to Penguin. But we'll see. Who else do we have? I don't really... I tried him once. This is terrifying. Like, they're basically saying we just slice Dingo Duff down... Dingo Duff. Dingo Dial in half. Then shove Tiny Tiger in like, oh, it's just horrible. <laughs> like, you know, sometimes when you think about it too much and you're like, oh, this is fucked. What's wrong with his face? It's horrible. Don't like it. Let's go with something better looking. She's kind of annoying after a while, though, because she says that they, they tend to only have a limited amount of barks. Every person has a limited amount of barks, and it gets to the point where you're just like, ah. This guy just makes penguin noises. Where's someone who speaks a little bit, though? I really am putting off playing my least favorite characters, so yeah, don't expect an entrance play anytime soon. Look at all the style I played. Oh, this is depressing. Shut up. What is with her outfit? I can't work it out. Is it like... It's like she just painted stripes on herself or something. I don't really get it. Now she's a tiger or something. And then she's like got pink hair. And this like feels more like in keeping. And then she's like standard. Where she's got like the engine outfit on. <laughs> Let's have the pink one. And keep the car the same because I'm fed up with customizing. So, what was I talking about on the past thing? Um, yeah, let's just change the subject entirely. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, we can talk about that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so, um, like, stupid shit that me and my friends talk about in the car. Like, um, when we. You know, you do dumb shit when you're in a long fucking. You know, you're doing a long ass fucking drive of your mate and he's driving. And you're bored, and it's like maybe, like in our case, it was like in southeast, southwest England, and you know, just on the border of places like oh fuck, <laughs> of like Wales and stuff. And yeah, there's loads of country lanes in those Bristol kind of like areas and stuff between there and Wales. And you know, you just you've been playing a lot of dirt, and you decide that you're gonna just try and be a co-driver for a bit. And then you fuck it up, like, literally all of the time, and he's just like, stop. Yeah, that, that used to be a thing that we did. And then we just spend the whole time playing playing on our Spotify playlist, just, like, back-to-back, -back, like, metal. And, like, some of the weirdest stuff would come up in a row where you were like, I can't believe this this went from, like, In Flames to Papa Roach. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, they're, they're really the same subgenre. Um... Because Spotify has an interesting take on what's the same genre. I don't think it understands. But, like, you know, it's, it's trying. It's trying. Sometimes it completely ignores a very major band in the genre, though. Because, um, you know, whoever made the playlist was really into Baffery or something. <laughs> like, oh, Norwegian, the most, the hardest Norwegian death metal. And then it's just back to back Baffery. And you're like, where's all of the other Norwegian death metal acts? <laughs> or like um, the biggest black metal in the current thing. And it's like five behemoth songs and a couple hits from the moat songs. And then it's like Deicide or something. And you're like, yeah, I think there's more than three bands. Like those bands are good. <laughs> but like, you know, it's always that subgenre kind of conversation. Anyway, I've had two different people say to me when I've been in the car with them or when we were just talking about metal, and I, we, I just bring up stuff where I try and emulate people's voices, like Arch Enemy or Cannibal Corpse's voices, because um, I'm trying to explain what I'm looking for when I'm like listening to death metal, and I can't explain it because it's mostly different tones of growling and I have no vocal training whatsoever. But the amount of people who have said to me, oh man, yeah, 
Your, your, like, death metal screaming voice is actually ridiculously good. Do you practice or something? It's like, no, I don't think so. I think I used to just get into a lot of screaming matches when I was a kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just used to have a lot of arguments where, you know, the, you, you start to distort your voice when you're emotional, when you're screaming at someone because you're very angry or upset. <laughs> and, like, it kind of means that through a traumatic background... <laughs> You tend to get a very good death metal screaming voice because your sp your voice gets more and more damaged to the point that your vocals fray at a very low end. So I don't, my voice is quite low. I actually have to do a lot of like, um, it's like low in tone, but also low in volume. So I have to do a lot of mixing to make it like auditory when I'm doing these kind of like uh, playthroughs and stuff. But like, um, my death metal voice, me it means that like it frays really quickly, and people are always freaked out by how quickly my voice frays. It actually sucks when you're a teacher because you're expected to raise your voice in a loud, clear tone and use your voice as a weapon essentially all the time. Something I don't agree with, but is actually essential to being a teacher: being able to raise your voice and like use body language to explain to the kid you can't do that. That's unacceptable in society because kids are like. Kind of more like animals than they are people at that point. They're, they're in training. Like, social graces aren't innate. Any, like, anybody who ever thought that in a philo philosophy lesson need only go and work with children for a short period of time to realize most stuff that you think is innate, like thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not beat the shit out of each other over minor things, thou shalt just not, oh, I want snatch. <laughs> Kids do that all the time, and you have to say to them, no, you can't do that. <laughs> like, you know, that's bad. <laughs> like, all of the time. And you have to kind of be like that. But you can't scare them, and you've got to be audible. You've got to be in a loud, clear voice. Obviously, when I get, like, past a volume level that people want me to be at all of the time, my vocals fray, like, straight away. And it becomes very difficult to understand me again. But, like, as a result, everyone thinks I have an amazing Batman voice. And everyone thinks that I have a pretty good death metal voice because it just goes straight into like a kind of sound straight away. Because like it just, ah, I'm not even bringing it up like to a loud volume before it starts to like fray really badly. And like I don't even need to bring it loud and I, even at a low volume it's fraying really quickly and making that distorted sound that a lot of grindcore and death metal bands use a lot with that kind of kind of sound. Especially like, you know, disturbed in like the sickness era with the kind of sound and like the stupid noises and things. The, the death metal noises. I still can't breathe. I, I always thought it'd be cool to learn pig squealing and breeing, but I just never really like. I've looked up basically a bunch of YouTube videos and then just listened to a lot of death metal and gotten to the point where I'm like, yes, <laughs> I can do it. But it's like only in short bursts because it does actually hurt my voice because a lot of it is on the vocal cords, which is the wrong way to death metal scream. You're supposed to bring it out from the chest. So it's much better if you kind of like. And it sounds much more like Phil Anselmo's kind of style vocals in like Far Beyond Driven era and stuff where he's just like, Whoa! kind of sound where it's just like all in the chest because it's supposed to be there. And if, if I get it right, I can do a pretty good one, but I'm not going to do it like all of the time. <laughs> like, because I can't do it like, well, <laughs> like, you know, like it's something that I've like, don't practice enough. I always remind myself I should spend more time practicing. Like, I'd say like... Because I always wanted to be a death, like, I wanted to be in a death metal band my, pretty much my entire life after I got into death metal. Uh, I was in a fresh metal band when I was in college. It was fun. It wasn't going to go anywhere. But it was fun. <laughs> uh. Oh, that shark guy was behind me. Um. Yeah, like, um. And I always wanted to start doing distorted vocals. A lot of my friends, I used to play the guitar. Uh, I haven't for a year or so now, and I miss it. But like, I just don't have the time and money to keep buying guitars and lugging them around because I travel a lot for my job. Um, so yeah, I kind of just wanted to transition into like hardcore or death metal vocals. And 
no one I know, especially in China, wants to open a death metal band, especially not an English language death metal band, because then they can't check what I'm saying. And I could be just like, fuck the system, <laughs> like, you know, and they'd be like, uh, what are you saying? I'm saying I like pancakes, so I'll tell them in Chinese, uh, Chinese and I'll be like, oh, okay, and then some guy will come around and arrest us all. <laughs> One guy will speak good enough English to understand that I'm saying, you're all wrong, <laughs> and they'll be like, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't agree with your system. <laughs> and they'll just have enough, like a high enough level to understand my scream vocals. <laughs> and then I'm fucked. <laughs> you know? Nah, you don't meet many metalheads out here. You meet a bunch of guys who are a little more like... Every Brit I meet, man, he's like, Do you like the football? I'm like, I like rugby. Oh yeah. Be cool if you like the football. You heard of, like, Arctic Monkeys? Yeah, I am from Britain. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, just because I listen to Death Metal doesn't mean I don't understand who the Arctic Monkeys are. I read their two first albums, you know, before they kind of went downhill. Then I bought AM. Like most people in Britain do. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not, like, completely, like, in a cave going, I only listen to Death Metal. <laughs> like, you know, like, I actually do, like, understand music that's, like, outside of the genre. But I'm still like an old ass man. <laughs> I've realized that really quickly. Everyone's like, hey, have you heard this guy? And it's like, every person, man, in the top 40, I'm like, oh, I'm old. But then you get that much earlier when your subgenres and genres that you listen to are never in the top 40 in your nations that you live in. Because it's like, you know, well, if Carcass was still in the top 40, Carcass were never in the top 40. If Carcass were in the top 40, then maybe I'd be a bit more hip, but you know what I mean? It's just like, sorry, like, I don't even realize Justin Bieber looked like a creepy-ass old man now. I still thought he looked like a teen girl. And they're like, look, he looks like this now. And he said, no, he looks kind of like the guy from Maroon 5 now. <laughs> Am I blind? So yeah, every now and then I just slam on some Lamb of God and some Arch Enemy and I just try and practice my scream vocals and then I listen to some Iron Maiden and fail to reach the registers that I need to to the flow songs and I listen to some Judas Priest, the kind of era where he was doing stuff like heading out to the highway to make myself feel better. <laughs> I can actually kind of sing that because <laughs> it's like all kind of low. <laughs> he's, not, he's not doing the painkiller shit on those. You know, you can do Breaking the Law just about. Although, my, my actual song range in clean is really bad. It's all lows. All lows. You can tell by my voice, my standard voice, everything I do is all lows. But yeah, every time one of my friends is like, Hey, I picked up the bass again, or I picked up the guitars again, or I'm thinking about taking up drumming, I'm like, so, do you want to start a new black and death metal band? And they're like, nah, I don't really do that anymore. You know, I don't even really, like, I haven't even listened to Slipknot's new album lately. And you're like, well, you know, if you could just get around to doing that, that would be great. <laughs> you know, because, you know, it never, like, for some people it went away. For me, it never went away. And that whole is just a phase, honey. It really depends on how much you're scared of other people's opinion and how much into it you are. And I just stayed in, man. There's a lot of things that, you know, just, they just, I hooked on them and I was like, you know what? I'm not done, so there's still a lot more to explore. I'm happy. And it wasn't until I was about 25, 30 that I even picked up bands like Obituary. And it's like, I'm glad I picked up Obituary. And then I play people chopped in half, like my more mainstream metalhead fans. And they're like, what is this? <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean it's chopped in half? Can't you understand him? <laughs> chopped in half! <laughs> and they're just like... <laughs> but you know, I, I like it, so it's fine. <laughs> like, I'm having fun. That's what matters, right? That's my motto. But yeah, occasionally I put on like uh, something from Ashes of the Wake or um, Ruin or like I'll play like, you know, some hits like uh, uh, Walk With Me in Hell and I'm just trying to sing along doing a similar voice kind of thing like 
just like, those those lyrics just fucking slap, man. They don't get like they don't stop being relevant. They're still really like there's a lot of passion behind, and it's just like this is fucking high concept shit, man. Well, I think so. <laughs> but then I think like taking a big dump on Christianity is always hilarious to me because I'm like, Haha, yeah, fuck those tyrannical assholes. <laughs> like, you know, and you know that's my Christian audience gone. <laughs> Sorry when you stop being like a vehicle for the right wing to stop pushing progress and put tradition and slavery on everybody through those stupid traditionist manners. I'll listen, <laughs> like, you know, but at the moment, you guys seem to just be a vehicle for pro-life and bullshit like that, so, <laughs> like, you know, come back when you're real, and no one's gonna forgive, even though it's clearly not all of them, it's always, like, you know, you always hear about guys, like, as a Brit, you just hear, radical church fanatics from America bother gay people because they have no fucking concept of privacy, <laughs> like, you know, and you're like, oh, great, but it's like Westboro Baptist Church, that's like saying, you know, the Church of Satan is the only Satanist kind of group, you know what I mean? Church of Satan guys are coming after me now because they think they are the only Satanists, so, um, yeah, it's like kind of like going, you know, like ISIS are the only Muslims. It's just like, you know, that's not true. I'm, I'm getting on dodgy ass ground. Let's move this back to death metal. <laughs> like, I don't think you should burn down churches. Don't burn down churches. That's awesome. Please don't do that. Only burn down churches if you get somebody's consent to burn down their church. <laughs> If they put a demolition notice out and they say, we would prefer it if you set fire to this church. It wants, I want it, you to cremate my church if you're going to demolish it in any way. No dynamite, fire, then by all means. <laughs> like, you know. You never want to burn the churches, though. They always want to keep them up forever. Kind of says everything about that. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um. Don't burn the churches. I swear every LP, man. I, I see something really fucking dumb. <laughs> like, you know. Cringeworthy bullshit right here. But yeah, like, I always wanted to sing death metal. I love singing death metal. I love doing it. It's just fun. Like, it's really... And it, like, it's... Really good way to clear your throat out. If you ever feel like there's something stuck in your back in your throat, sing the Eamon Amath version of Aerials, and I trust me, you will clear whatever's out in your throat. <laughs> like, you know, if you do it right, you know, the real low, like, Aerials, kind of thing. And it will, it will clear. But yeah, like, um... Let's change the subject. <laughs> um, so I think there's only one other track that I have not done on this so far. So we're probably going to do that at the end. Oh man, this track. This track is cool, but I just don't get the motifs. Why are there, like, luminous cacti everywhere? Of all the things to put in the future, I will put these... I just don't really understand what they're going for here. It's cool, but it's like... I don't really get what the cactus is a symbol of. Feels like they just needed something to fill the space, unless I'm missing something. Am I missing something? I'm probably missing something. Uh, <laughs> wow. mm. Trying to think of anything safe <laughs> to say that will not like come back on my ass later. Or will turn into a horrible dark story and it's like, Everything I fucking say 
is a horrible dark story. Like, for example, I was just thinking, I'm going to talk about my cat. And, like, my cat's, like, great. My cat's awesome. He's a little odd. He likes to do silly things. Uh, he likes to knock things over for attention. You know, the usual cat stuff. But I feel really bad sometimes because, like, when I bought my cat, I bought him just around the time that this girl I was kind of seeing at the time uh, was getting a cat too. And I thought, oh, well, this will be nice. And, like, you know, it kind of fizzled out because we weren't really doing anything because, like, it was just really awkward. Like, she was way cooler than I was. Like, you know, you're talking to her and she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she did Thai boxing too. Uh, she was a cop. She was really pretty strong, and she, she reckoned she could kick my ass in a fight, and honestly, I think she did, could, because she's probably got, well, she's got police training, and she's a Thai boxer, so, and I'm just, like, some, like, casual Thai boxer, you know, I'm like, oh, like, how to roundhouse, and I can throw a nifty elbow every now and then, and I just do it for the fitness and the fun, I'm not really taking it serious. She was pretty good at it. And it was hot for a bit, and I was like, yeah, like, she's really strong and stuff. And I don't feel, like, threatened by that, by any means. But it just, like, I felt like she was just too good for me. I felt like she was looking for someone, like, more badass. She was looking for a badass guy, because my name is quite an aggressive name. I'm covered in tattoos. Like I've talked about before, I'm into metal and stuff. So I dress, like, in quite an edgy way. And I think she thought, she, I was like gonna be like you know when people get to know me they realize that i'm quite like a kind of chill guy and i think she was like i want a badass guy who eats nails for breakfast yeah and i'm just like oh hello <laughs> you know and so like the, the the illusion is broken the moment i speak and they're like what do you like to do i play crash team racing <laughs> so yeah like i look like i'm hard i guess if you're blind or if you don't know what you know, if you don't see many foreign people, oh, he looks kind of tough. Oh, he's speaking, and no, he's a pushover and a bit of a sissy. <laughs> Not sissy, wuss. And like, on one day, I had a girl say to me, oh, I thought you were going to be really strong and scary, but actually, you're kind of cute. I don't normally do cute guys, and I'm like, Thanks. <laughs> I have a whole image, <laughs> and you've just ruined it. I have an image, man, I say, as my pink-haired girl character is like, yeah. Hey, man, I'm just comfortable in my sexuality. Shut up. <laughs> you know, I'm not really one of those toxic masculine kind of guys. But, like, um... Oh, man. Yeah, that was a kind of weird time in my life. I'll finish this story another time, because I'm going to, like... Well, let's see. I mean, we did this one, right? Yeah, we did these with Ripperoo, and I lost. I remember now. We didn't do this one. I'm checking if we've not done... We've done all of these for sure. We did Turbo Track, I remember. That was the bonus on the one. So we've only got this one, so we're gonna go over this. Ugh, I think mean, I have to finish my dark anecdote. Like I have a big theme of like basically every girl I've dated over the past like year or so has had animals that have died <laughs> soon after me meeting them. And I've been like this is a bad omen, man. This is a bad omen. I used to really love Pinstripe, but that's because he was busted in the first game. We didn't play him, right? We didn't play Fake Crash. Let's play him. If you play the Komodo Brothers, they just make lots of... S puns, because of course they do like that. I'm just so good and all that stuff, so it gets a bit grating after a while. This guy's more like a wise guy kind of guy. He's kind of fun. Uh, yeah. Dark, dark things, dark things. Uh, yeah. Like, one girl I was kind of chatting up from a dating site, her hamster died, and I was like, oh. 
is that how, you know, you're, you're chatting to a girl, <laughs> and you're like, talking to her, she's like, oh, I'm so sad, my hamster died, and you're like, how do I respond to this? <laughs> like, oh no, and you're thinking, like, you, you don't want to be that guy, but you hear yourself saying, it's like, well, what happened? Did you feed it? And you're thinking, like, now you're making her sound like an asshole. Oh, yeah, I didn't feed him. He's like, oh, no, I was away on a business trip for a couple of days, and I left him food and water, but he escaped, and now he's dead. And I'm like, oh, no. And I, I am genuinely upset, and I'm like, oh, no. And I'm feeling like, you know, this is one of the, like, first seven conversations I'm having with this girl, right? And, like... But this isn't about this chick, this is about the other chick, the cop chick that I was seeing, kind of, badly. It was just, it, it went horrible. <laughs> like, you know, I was terrifying by accident, like, she was in my home on the first date by accident, because, like, everything fucked up and then the restaurant was closed or something, and we, I was just like, oh yeah, we'll just hang around, and I got really nervous, because I was like, oh, she's in my house. Anxiety! <laughs> and I was just like... Um, and then I forgot that, like, you know, girls have reasons to be scared of, like, being in a guy's house that they barely know, and I was just acting like a big bouncy dog, <laughs> like, you know, the equivalent of a big bouncy dog, Well, I was doing really wide, waving arm movements, and this chick is a cop, and she can kick my ass, I know this perfectly well, but I could still see her recoiling and shit, because I'm just waving my arms around, like, yeah, and doing big, large gestures, and she's like, you know, um, and then at one point, like, literally, we're cooking dinner together, and I go and get something, and my fridge was in the living room or something, because the layout was weird, and, like, uh, I come running down the hallway afterwards, just striding really fast, and she can hear my footsteps, and she just is like, fuck, <laughs> I'm just like, wait, what, uh, and I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I sound like a fucking rapist, <laughs> like, you know, and then, like, honestly, I felt so bad about the situation that, like, it got to the point where I was just taking her out for dinner, like, all of the time, and, like, kind of being really, really nice to her, because <laughs> I was like, oh, I made her feel unsafe, and that's not cool, you know, and it, like, honestly, I'm not gonna, like, actually hurt anybody, but, like, you know, it, it, I, I came across as intimidating to this person because they didn't know me, you know? And I was just, like, a strange, large, foreign man with tattoos. And she was like, oh, fuck, <laughs> you know? And, like, it got to the point that I was so awkward that she was like, I'm just gonna go after, like, a couple of, like, we were just watching Netflix and stuff. And she was just like, I'm just gonna go. And I'm like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so you... You want me to show you out? And she's like, no, I'm fine. <laughs> Worst date to this day. Worst date I've ever been on. Oh, look, we unlocked a new thing. Excuse to continue this horrible, horrible, dank story. I'm actually going to continue this dank story. I could stop at any point. <laughs> We're not. We're going to just throw out my horrific dating. Anyway. It was fine after that. We went on acceptable date. She showed me some really cool bars, some really cool restaurants. I showed her some cool places. We had fun. We ate a lot of food. We used to hang out a lot. It was cool. But it became more and more of like, we're just friends kind of thing. Nothing really ever happened that was really big. And then I started to realize that she didn't really approve of a lot of things. Because I was like, hey man, I want to get a motorbike. And she's just like, no, I don't need to get a motorbike. And then we, she was getting a cat. And I was like, oh, you know, I've always, I kind of felt around this point, I want to get a cat. So, let's see, what can we play? What didn't we see much of, because I fucked it up. I mean, there's all these bonus ones where I came like last on them, but surprise, surprise, you come first on them, it's virtually the same thing. 